Ukrainians still have a decent number of HIMARS rockets. Here, a Russian Buk M2 air defense system is destroyed by HIMARS. The death of American citizen Russell Texas Bentley, who changed his passport to a Russian one and moved to the Donetsk region 10 years ago, is very ironic. He was killed by those whom he considered his friends and called comrades, soldiers of the 5th Tank Battalion, whose original location was in Ulan Ude, Buryatia. They considered him a spy, kidnapped, tortured and killed. This happened in the Donetsk region. But the fate of Texas is not at all an isolated case of one's own eliminating one's own, although it is interesting because we are talking about an American citizen. Since the Russian army is simply an army of killers and looters, this is the end met by many who signed up to cooperate with this mafia. This year marks 10 years since the start of the war in Ukraine, when Russia occupied Crimea and invaded the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, but most of those who started the so-called Russian Spring did not survive these 10 years, and they mostly did not die on the battlefield. The only exception is probably Alexander Mojev with the call sign Babe. It is reported that this terrorist was eliminated by the Ukrainian armed forces on October 19, 2023. Most of the remaining leaders were killed in the rear. Evgeny Ishchenko with the call sign Malyash, one of the leaders of the group of the 31st Cossack District of the Don Army, died on January 23, 2015, when a car was fired at by unknown persons on the Pervomysk Lysychansk Highway. Alexei Mozgovoy, commander of the Prizrak Battalion, also died after the shooting of his car on May 23, 2015. Mikhail Givi Tolstyk, commander of the Somalia Battalion, died in an explosion in his office in Makayevka on February 8, 2017. Valery Bolotov, who led the Army of the Southeast, died in Moscow on January 27, 2017, as a result of acute heart failure. But there are suspicions that it was poisoning. In Russia, you really need to avoid drinking tea and going near open windows. This often ends in a heart attack. Arsen Motorola Pavlov, commander of the Sparta unit, died on October 16, 2016, as a result of an explosion in an elevator. Pavel Batya Dremov, commander of the Stakhanov Cossack self-defense, died on December 12, 2015, when the car in which he was traveling to his own wedding exploded. Alexander Batman Bednov, commander of the Batman Battalion, was killed on January 1, 2015, during an arrest attempt. Oleg Anashchenko, head of the LPR Air Defense Troops on February 4, 2017, his car was blown up. Gennady Sipkolov, the first deputy of the People's Governor of the LPR, Valery Bolotov, hanged himself in his cell. Of course, we all believe that it was suicide. And of course, Alexander Zakarchenko, the head of the DPR, who died in an explosion at the Separatist restaurant in the center of Donetsk. All these people were real criminals, terrorists, and murderers. Russia turned the Lugansk and Donetsk regions into a zone without law, where power belongs to bandits. Prigozhin's PMC Wagner was involved in the liquidation of many of these people, but was later liquidated by Putin. They are all also similar. They were given a certain power, but since these were all people without borders, they crossed the lines that, according to the Kremlin, they should not have crossed. Igor strelkov gurkin is still alive, but sits in prison and is preparing to be sent back to the DPR, where he will also most likely be eliminated. This is the fate that awaits most of the most active friends of the current Kremlin regime. The same thing happened under Lenin and Stalin, when the executioners became victims of their own. If you sign a contract with the devil with outright evil, you are unlikely to count on pardon. And the same thing goes for Russell Texas Bentley. Russian troops in the center of Ocheratin. The settlement is mostly Russian controlled now, while they continue to advance north and west. Сзади этой группы висит флаг Российской Федерации. Following the AFU commander in chief Sirsky, President Zelensky said that the Russian military leadership has set the task to take Chasiv Yar before May 9th, Victory Day in Russia. By my assumptions, it is also about the date of May 7th, which is the day of Putin's inauguration, and they need at least a small victory by the memorable date.
Now, the Russian public channels often mention this date as the date of some special event that will allegedly hit Ukraine and its allies like a ton of bricks. Therefore, the Russian Federation is concentrating its efforts on breaking through the defenses west of Bakhmut in order to reach the Seversky Donets Donbas Canal and capture Chasiv Yar. The Russian brigades in this direction have been reinforced with additional ammunition, drones, and electronic warfare equipment. British intelligence believes that the Russian army is using the same tactics during the offensive at Chasiv Yar as it did during the capture of Avdivka. British intelligence agents refer to a report by the Kortitsia Operational Strategic Group that the enemy drops 20, 30 aerial bombs a day in the area of Chasiv Yar. There will be other meat assaults, and Chasiv Yar will be turned into another Avdivka. Zelensky, if Ukraine falls, Putin will invade the Baltic countries. He wants to bring back the influence of the Soviet Union. Whether they're in NATO or not, this doesn't concern him. Безумовно, після Балтійських держав під ударом буде і Польща, і частина Німеччини. The occupier was showing something to the Ukrainian drone. As a result, a fat drone flew into the house where he and his comrades were located and destroyed it, burying the invaders under the ruins. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.